What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So this is going to be just a kind of a, a basic tutorial. I'm going to try to cram as much as information as I can in your brain about water cooling. Just the basics. What you need to know. This is basically just going to be a quick buyer's guide. We're going to go soft tube or we're going to go hard tubing. There's either one or the other when it comes to water cooling. So let's jump right into it. All water cooling fittings, all water cooling hardware, like this right here. This is a water block. This is a water block for a GPU. This is a reservoir pump combo. And then this right here is a radiator. All of those components have the same thread, a G1 slash 4 thread. Okay, that's what it says. It says it's a G1 slash 4. That is the basic standard for all water cooling hardware. Everything has that. Everything. The fittings, the, I mean, just like I said, everything. The blocks, even the cheap blocks, um, water blocks down to the most expensive water blocks. The diameter of those hole is a G14. See, it says right there, G14 thread. Okay, that's just the the hole, these holes right here, that you're going to screw any type of fitting into it. G14. Okay, glad I got that answered. <laughs> so, when it comes to water cooling, you're either going to do soft tube or you're going to go hard tube. If you're new at this, I recommend you going soft tube. Soft tube is so easy. All you need is barbs and tubing and you're good. When it comes to hard tubing, you need special tools. You need patience. You need to understand how to properly bend the PET tubing. You, under, you need to understand um, you know, a little bit about water chemistry and how, you know, biocides and other things kind of accumulate. And there's just all kinds of little stuff. But when it comes in the water cooling, let's say you're going to go with soft tubing. Soft tubing is real easy because all you need to do is get barbs. These are barbs. When every time you see a barb like that, that is for soft tubing automatically soft tubing that's what that is if it is a fitting for tubes or a, like hard tube it will look like this very different looking as you can see these right here are called compression fittings now when it comes to compression fittings there are two types of compression fitting up here in the title it says right here hard tubing compression fitting okay now this is a soft tubing but it's also a compression fitting but i mean you can clearly see the difference in them see like this one right here has that nipple well basically what that is that's the barb okay and you're just taking this second piece right here all right you just strick the hose onto that and then your hose goes through that fitting and it just screws down and it compresses it down onto that barb. Now when it comes to hard tubing, not so much. It's a little bit differently. The hard tube actually sits in a little groove with an O-ring. And that pressure that that fitting squeezes down against that O-ring is what gives you your seal. That's just a little bit basic, you know. Now, when it comes to radiators, all right, you do not need a $100 radiator. You don't even need a $70 radiator or a $40 radiator. You just need a cheap one. You just need something that will get the job done. Like I was saying, all of the radiators are G14 threads, so you don't have to worry about any of that. The only difference in radiators is usually... The amount of pipes, which is this right here, this is the amount of pipes or channels. Each one of those channels is where the water actually runs through. So it will say that this is a 12 
pipe radiator or this is an 18 pipe radiator that is what they're referring to they're referring to the lines these channels these water channels that is the pipe that's what they're talking about that's how many there are in it the second thing that you want to look for when it comes to radiators is the thickness of it a super thick radiator is going to have more displacement and is going to cool better but you have to remember you have to strap fans to that super thick radiator so you better hope that you have the clearance to fit in your case when it comes to orientation all right it does not matter guys if your reservoir or your i'm sorry if your radiator is in the upright or upside down position it really doesn't matter just think of it this way it's water water wants to flow in and flow out easier so just have that in mind here's a thinner radiator right here this radiator is a little bit thinner but it also has the same features i don't know what pipe design this is maybe it's a 12 or an 18 or something like that i'm not sure but you can see how super thin it is still it holds a 120 millimeter fan so when you're looking at radiators they come in a couple different sizes 120 240 and 360. basically that's how many fans fit on the radiator if there's only one fan like room for one fan on, a, on that radiator like this one right here to my left this would be a 120 millimeter radiator because it only fits one fan this one right here as you can see will fit two fans so that is a 240 millimeter radiator so on and so forth they go all the way up to 400 millimeters hold four fans but that right there is the basic easiest way to explain it now if you're going to go the hard tube route okay the first thing that you are going to need is this right here you are going to need a tube bending kit okay now it's not necessarily that you need all of these tools but you do need the inserts okay the inserts that go inside of the hard tube so that way when you are heating it the tube does not cave in on itself the insert is to keep the integrity of the tube while you are heating it and bending it because if you were to try to bend it without that insert you're going to end up with like a like a jelly roll in the side of your bin and it's going to look like utter crap utter crap now they do make these little cool little things like this right here these are really cool these are basically just angle positions allowing you to bend the tube to the proper angle these come in all shapes and sizes they come in all different materials and they come at all different prices the very basic cheap one like this is 20 bucks for all three that's all you need you don't need nothing fancy now this little red thing right here I know you guys have seen this before okay this red thing is what is actually cleans the inside and the outside this right here in the position that you see it is cleaning the outside of the tube if the person was to take that red thing and flip it there would be a point on the other side and that's how you would clean the inside of the diameter of the tube that only works for hard tubing you only need to clean the 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 ends of the pipes on hard tubing soft tubing you don't need you can just very simply take it and cut it and be on your way now this kit right here i'm actually going to do a tutorial on this kit because as you can see right here in the top i purchased this item already and it is here it's actually sitting next to me kind of the uh thing the reason why i wanted to do that let's talk about blocks okay water blocks I know you hear people talk about don't mix your metals 
don't run an aluminum radiator with a copper block and a metal pump or a metal pump with a aluminum block, copper, blah, 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 whatever. First of all, your system is not going to be, unless you plan on putting that system together and not touching it for well over a year, then you need to worry about cross-contamination. You need to worry about your metals. You need to worry about that. But I have a pretty good chance that when you put this system together, you're going to have to do some maintenance on it at some point and another within that year. That's okay. It's typical maintenance when it comes to water cooling. But water cooling will very easily add 300 and up dollars to your build very easily blocks alone start anywhere from 25 bucks and go all the way up to 150 bucks just depending on if you want them rb rgb nickel black whatever it doesn't matter copper aluminum whatever when it when i when i do these builds i don't care because first of all i'm going to run a bio side inside of my water okay and a bioside is basically this this little you can find it on Amazon here. I'll type it in PT nuke is what it's called. Right here, Primo Chill Liquid Utopia. See, it's a coolant loop protecting. This right here is a must. You have to have this. This is non-negotiable. You have to put a couple drops of this in your system every time you change the water. No big deal. I'm getting off subject from water blocks, but when it comes to coolant, I recommend you stay away from coolant. Run normal water, just normal distilled water. Do not use the water that is out of your faucet. The water that comes out of your faucet is full of impurities and metals and all kinds of stuff, and, you, and that's just asking for trouble and just asking for things to grow in your system don't need that get distilled jug water it's like 35 cents for a gallon of it it's super cheap you're only going to need a gallon of it anyway but if you run these types of coolants like these these ones that these manufacturers are selling like primo chill or whatever the brand is first of all whatever color you pick that's what color your blocks, your tubes, your fittings, everything is going to be dyed that color. So let's just say you want to run a purple. Well, you're tired of purple. Now you want to go to yellow. Guess what? You're going to find that, your, that all of your hardware is stained. Even the reservoir is stained with purple. Okay, that's my first reason why you shouldn't run it. Second of all, the stuff that adds the color that makes this coolant purple or blue or green or red or whatever the color it is, is going to start breaking down once heat. After a little bit of running, what happens is, is the dye in there breaks down due to the heat and it starts gumming up your system. All those little micro channels and all the little channels that all the water has to run through will get gummed up because of these dyes. I see it happen all the time. Um, I use straight water, guys, and I put a little bit of biocide in them, and I never have a problem with it. Never. So, anyway, that's just my little quick spiel about water um, and what type of coolant you should put in the system. Back to water blocks. Water blocks. Make sure you get a water block that fits your socket whatever your socket is get that water block okay and basically it's all about budget and what you like they're all the same like i said you don't have to worry about if it's copper or nickel or aluminum don't worry because you're going to end up cleaning your system or refreshing it or having to add water to it or doing whatever about every six months or so um but blocks there are a dime a dozen, and it's just really up to choice. There's no actual performance difference, I think. I'm sure some of these probably cool better than others, whatever. Um, I'll just leave that up to you guys. Now, 
Uh, let's see here. I did. I talked about radiators. I talked about blocks. Let's talk about pumps and reservoirs. <sighs> reservoirs are milli are what do they call them? Milli milli milliliter. Okay, there it is. Milliliter. 250 milliliters is about your basic small size anything up to that I usually run about a 350 milliliter loop uh, reservoir in my system it doesn't matter it's just whatever fits in your system and can work with your system that's that's all it really matters d5 is the best pump on the market I have used a ton of cheap and generic pumps and I really haven't had too much of a problem with them. Not really. So when it comes to doing these, buying pumps and reservoirs and stuff, um, that's really up to you. You can buy a pump separate and then buy a reservoir separate, or you can buy an all-in-one kind of like this, but be aware you will pay good money. And then like up here, these are the sizes 200, 300, that's just talking about how big the actual reservoir is. That's that's all that is. That's no big deal. Um, pumps, reservoirs, blocks. I mean, this water cooling is insane. Um, I actually own this one right here. Uh, it works quite fine. I have no issues with it. It's made out of aluminum. It's quiet. So... And when you look at these, you want to look at the uh, the like liters an hour per flow. So this one right here pumps 800 liters an hour, which is pretty quick. That's that's pretty quick. 800 liters. That's not bad. Um, some of the more expensive pumps will pump, you know, 1,200, 1,500 liters a second. Um, when it comes to water cooling, though, and you're you're brand new at it, and you're just not sure what what fittings go with what tubes because they're all different sizes they're they're half inch and three eighths and five eighths and then when you go to compare it it comes out to 14 millimeter and 10 millimeter look all that stuff can get confusing so i just recommend you going for one of these see I actually ordered this one too and I'm going to do a review on it when it gets here. But the reason why I bought it is because I know that those fittings that come with this kit are compatible with that tubing. And I know that they're also compatible with the block, with the pump, with the reservoir, and with that radiator. It comes with fans, it comes with everything you need, and you can't go wrong. And you can start off comfortably with this because you know that what you're getting will fit and will work together especially if you're not sure because it's it's basically just how you want to run the loop and the way that you choose to run your loop but like i tell everybody the price of your system goes up immediately you can spend hundreds of dollars on fittings alone easily it's just the way it goes. So I hope I answered some of y'all's questions about water cooling. Um, there's so much more I could sit here and talk about for hours. Um, but I just try to, you know, give you the best that I could. Um, stay away from these. That's good advice. These types of pumps right here. Um, I've bought two or three of these and each of them have failed within a month to two months or they will crack on me the little fitting right there where it screws into cracks and then you get a leak in your system that's a pain so that's the really the only information I can say about those and really D5 is the best um, these are fittings 90 degree these will work for both hard tubing and soft tubing because as you can see there these are just like extensions of fittings you can actually screw a barb fitting onto that or a compression fitting onto that and it would work quick disconnects are god sense you got to have a quick disconnect you don't have to but they make it so much easier to deal with life when you are actually 
having to maintenance it. And also, you must have a drain valve in your system. Think about it. How are you going to drain your water system? How are you going to drain it to maintain it? What are you going to do? Pick the PC up and tilt it over and let the water run out? Nope, not happening. So you have to have a drain valve. Watch plenty of videos, guys. I got some great water cooling videos that are going to come out in the next couple of weeks. Tutorials, and I'm going to show you guys, and hopefully I can answer some more questions. So, thank you. Subscribe. Check us out. Y'all be cool.